Are you getting dropped frames? Are you getting skipped frames? Do you just want your stream to look as silky and smooth as possible? Good. You should. And you found just the video to make that happen. I've got all the best settings here for you, along with the explanations for what they mean, including encoding an X264 or NVENC, bitrate, resolution, and everything else you'll need to make your stream run like a dream instead of a nightmare. Let's make some magic. Hello streamers, I am Gokex, the stream whiz, and I have spent years helping people love and learn technology. Now I'm combining that skill with my passion for streaming to bring you the best tips and tricks for your stream. In today's video, we are going to make sure that your stream looks and runs great, and we're going to do that by focusing on the streaming section of OBS Studio's settings window. There's just a few key concepts that we need to wrap our head around, and none of them are too wild. So let's get to it and get your stream shining. First, let's talk quickly about how your stream gets from the game on your computer to Twitch. It starts with you, the streamer, generating some awesome gameplay, which OBS will take and compress, and it shoves that onto the miracle of tubes that is the internet. On the other end, Twitch takes that signal, decodes the video, and plays it to your happy viewers. The heart of a silky stream is bitrate aka how much data you're going to be sending over the internet to Twitch. The higher the bitrate, the more pixels you can send to Twitch per second and the sharper your stream will look. Whether it's due to a higher resolution or more action happening on screen, all of those pixels need bits to get over the internet. Now using bitrate as our base, we're going to work up and build you a stable and awesome looking stream. Twitch has a maximum bitrate of 6,000, which requires 6 megabits per second of upload on your internet connection. Now, I know not everybody has that kind of uplink, and even if you do, you don't want to use your entire upload uh, connection for streaming. In general, I'd say you should leave at least 25% of your connection available for Discord, games, and other programs to use the internet. And this will also make sure your stream can stay nice and sharp since the traffic won't end up congested with any other programs. This means if you want to be able to upload with the full bitrate of 6000, you should have an effective upload speed of 8 to 10 megabits per second. So with that in mind, before we can actually dig into the settings here, if you don't know what your internet upload speed is, head on over to speedtest.net and give it a quick check. I would recommend running a speed test on two different websites just so you have something to compare it with. Now, take your upload speed, jot that down somewhere, we'll use it in just a moment. Go ahead now, open up OBS, and let's have some fun. Now that we're on the settings screen, it's time for some fun. But first, we need two more things. We need a calculator and a chart. So get out the Windows calculator and grab the handy dandy NVIDIA chart, which is linked. Okay. Now, if you take a look at this wonderful chart from NVIDIA, it has some really great information here about how much bandwidth you need to have to be able to stream at various bit rates. Now, remember we said bit rate is what makes a stream silky. So head on down to the output tab. <clears throat> and make sure you are on simple mode. All right, now first thing on the streaming screen is what encoder do you want to use? This is a pretty straightforward question and it boils down to, do you have an NVIDIA graphics card or not? If you have an NVIDIA card that supports the NVENC codec, you really ought to use it. There's really not a downside to it. If you don't, go ahead and use the CPU encoder. Right here is where you are going to set your bitrate. Remember we said Twitch caps it at 6,000 and you should not use more than 75% of your upload capabilities. And that's pretty much what the chart here from NVIDIA is. All right, are you ready to build your bandwidth bitrate base and make sure your stream has a nice solid foundation to get to Twitch? Let's go. This is where it's going to get fun. We get to do a little math and it's going to be different for everybody. So take your download speed that we had found previously and let's convert it from megabits to kbits by multiplying it by 1000 and let's see what about 75% of that would be. We're going to use around 7 megs as an example connection here. So let's go with 7,000 multiplied by 0.75. And that gives us about 
5200 for a bit rate that we can give to Twitch here. Let me know in the comments down below what your upload speed is and what kind of a bit rate you're going to be working with for the rest of this video. Go ahead and enter your bit rate here, round it down to the nearest 10 or 100 or so or whatever looks good for you. And if you check out Nvidia's chart on the side, you'll see that 5200 is just about what it says for a 6 meg connection. So with our 7 megs that we're pretending that we're working with here, that's a little bit of an overachievement, but that's better than not. It's always good to have a little extra overhead in our internet connection. You are looking great so far. Having your bitrate set within the range of your bandwidth is going to make sure you don't have any dropped frames. All right, now we are going to wrap up by seeing what kind of resolution you're going to be able to send through that connection. If you found this helpful so far, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for the next one, which is going to be setting up custom alerts in OBS Studio. Now that you've got your bitrate set, let's go ahead and choose a resolution that is low enough to get out over the wire, but high enough to still look good for the game that you're playing. This is something that's going to vary for everyone. And what we're going to use for our example here is the 7 meg connection. Check NVIDIA's chart again to see what works best for your connection based on the test we ran earlier. One note at the bottom, higher action streams require a faster bitrate. Your stream is blurry, you probably need a higher bitrate or a lower resolution. Like we said earlier, whether it's action or resolution, all of those pixels need bits. 720 at 60 FPS or 1080 at 30 FPS. And that would be up to you as a streamer, which would be more acceptable for the game you're providing. If it's a slower paced game with more HD graphics where 1080 would be a better payoff, or is it a faster paced game where the extra frames would make a bigger difference? Hopefully you could get more bandwidth and increase your bitrate all the way up to 6,000. Though I will say for very fast paced games like most first person shooters, that 6,000 bitrate still sometimes has a hard time keeping up and you'll still get occasional pixelation even with that much bitrate. 6,000 bitrate or 8 to 10 megabits per second. That'll get you the full blown 1080p 60. Not really any reason to go higher than that since that is all Twitch will support. 1080 30, 1080p 30 FPS or 720p 60. They're both right around 5,000 bitrate or 6 megs. And then at the lower end, if you have a uh, not too beefy of an upload. I don't think you can get away with much lower than four megs. That's even pushing it that you'd have to run at 720p 30 FPS. That's not going to be fun though. And always make sure you're hardwired if you can be. Just good networking practice. All right, now your stream should be ready to rock if you have uh, your bitrate set within 75% of your upload and you have your resolution set lower than what your bitrate can support, you should be ready to go. Um, there should be no more errors, no more blurriness, but just in case, let's go over a little bit of troubleshooting. If you keep an eye on the stats window of OBS, that's where you'll know all about your dropped frames and your skipped frames. Watching those lines will help you know how to adjust your settings if things get out of line. Dropped and skipped frames are pretty much the two most common issues, so let's talk about them. Now, if you're getting dropped frames, it means your bitrate is set higher than your internet connection can accommodate. So you need to either lower your bitrate or increase your bandwidth. I don't know which one of those is going to be easier for you, but once again, you shouldn't dedicate more than 75% of the actual upload bandwidth that you see in a speed test to streaming or other things that use your connection such as discord and games might start to impact your stream quality. If you're getting much lower speeds than you are paying for, call your internet provider and let them know how you feel about it. <laughs> Keep in mind that when you lower your bitrate, you also need to lower your game settings to accommodate or else that's going to lead us into our next best friend, skipped frames. 
Your PC is sending OBS frames more quickly than OBS can send those frames to Twitch. Sometimes this means your PC is not quite up to the task, or sometimes this means your resolution needs to be set a little bit lower. If you're not already using the NVENC encoder, you should be. But if you can't because you're not using an NVIDIA card, try turning down your resolution or the in-game settings such as shaders, particle density, view distance, and things to that effect. If you're not using NVENC, your goal is to reduce the load on your CPU so those frames can get encoded and sent to Twitch instead of getting skipped. I really hope this has helped you get your settings in order and cleared up any confusion you might have had about why you choose the options that you choose when it comes to your streaming output settings. It really helps to know why you select the settings you do. Let me know down below if you have any questions or hop in Discord if you need any help. Don't forget to like the video if you did find it helpful and subscribe so you don't miss the next piece of stream magic coming your way. I'll see you all again soon. Thanks.